Hello everybody, how are you? I didn't get my usual announcements put out today, so hopefully everyone remembered I was doing a live lesson today. My umbrella, which I have titled After the Rain. So I'm glad those of you that are here are here. Those of you that forgot, you can catch this on the replay. So not a problem. How is everybody? Can you hear me? First of all, can you hear me? <laughs> Hello, Charlene from Icy, Michigan. Ooh, yeah, I'm ready for winter to be done. I, I just don't like the cold weather. And yesterday we were in the 60s, and today we're in the 30s with the wind chill in the 20s. So up and down weather. I don't, I don't like the up and down stuff. Either be cold or be nice. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't like the up and down stuff. Um, so I don't get out much when it's cold. Hello, Rosanna. How are you? All right. You guys can hear me? I just want to make sure before I move on that you guys can hear me. So let me know. I tested it this morning before <laughs> I went live to make sure that I was getting sound to you guys. So um, hopefully... You're hearing me. Yes, you can hear me. All right. Thank you, Rosanna. I appreciate that very much. Okay. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys went over and got your line drawing for this. Uh, it's a pretty simple little shape. Um, what's going to take us the longest is probably the background on this one. Um, there's a few steps for the background itself. So uh, I'm going to put myself up in the corner here. Get ready to do some painting. This is what we're painting today. Now this was my original one here. It's on a 12 by 12 canvas. Um, today I'm going to be painting on a um, 10 by 10. I was originally going to do it on an 8 by 8, um, but I decided I would just do a 10 by 10. I thought that would be a nice size to do this lesson on. So. I'm doing it on a 10 by 10, so I did reduce my line drawing to about 85% of the original line drawing. 83% would work well as well for the uh, 10 by 10 canvas, so that's how much I reduced my canvas to. We won't need the line drawing for a little bit yet. we got to get the background uh, worked up a little bit. Uh, I'm also going to be using a circle stencil this size. This is a quarter inch circle stencil. And this one has quarter inch down here. And it goes up a quarter of inch all the way to two. Both these stencils are on my website. So, um, but I'm going to be using this one today. All right. We're not using a whole lot of colors here. Um, just five colors is it. And you can use whatever brands of paints that you have. I am going to be using Deco Art Traditions paints on this project. I uh, just love this paint, but you can use Americana. I, I think on my line drawing, I gave the conversion for Americana, but you really don't need a conversion. You know, it's just a sky blue color, um, a darker blue, um, white and black and red. Those are all the colors you need for this project, and it's a really, really fun one. So I'm going to set this over here. Hopefully I can not have it in the way, and I can see it well enough to show you what I'm doing. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is paint our background. Now I'm going to use just an old... I like to use my older brushes when I'm just painting my background in. I don't want to worry about using my my good brushes and and ruining them so you can use a filbert or a flat i've got a one inch size whatever you choose to use will be just fine i think i'm going to use the filbert um, one for this background set my stencil aside and we're going to put some paints out on the palette here let me move my palette up a little bit <clears throat> um, i'm going to be putting out my lighter blue um, some white and my darker blue. So I've got a decent size canvas here. And I am going to have to paint twice. So uh, I do want to put out a 
enough paint to paint it twice. So I'm going to do both of my blues and my So the colors that I have here are cobalt and uh, cobalt blue hue and cerulean blue. Um, I won't need much of the cobalt. It's a pretty powerful little color. All right, any of you painting along with me today, or is everybody just watching? I hope you're going to paint this one. It's a really, really fun, fun project. All right, I'm going to dampen my brush and remove the excess moisture out of it. I want some moisture to move my paint, but I don't want it to thin my paint down so much that it um, requires more work. And this brush is very, the bristles are pretty packed in there, so it's going to hold a little bit more, more moisture than what I would normally do. All right, so I'm going to take my white and my blue here and mix them. I just want to get a light blue to start with at the top of the canvas. And I feel like I still have a lot of moisture in that brush. This is just a nice light color to start with. Don't worry, this is just the first layer, so if we, if we don't like the colors we're putting in here because we are going to have a lot of light stuff going on over here. We can, um, on our second coat, adjust it a little bit. So this time I just picked up a little bit more of that brighter blue and I'm going to work my way down the canvas. I did prep my canvas with a couple of coats of white paint. Um, I just always do that because um, I don't want to work so hard to get my paint on my canvas and I feel like the the canvases when you get them at the store they just I don't know I don't think they're prepared as well as not as well as what I like <laughs> I want a little bit easier painting than scrubbing my paint into a canvas all right so I'm gonna start picking up a little bit of that uh, darker blue along with my um, lighter blue. And we're going to work down here. This area is going to be a little bit darker, a little bit closer to us. And I am doing two coats because I just want to make sure I've got that really good coverage on my canvas. Now this area down here, don't don't get it so dark that when you come when we come in and put our dark values in the background, we um, it's too dark and you won't see them down here. So make sure you've got a little bit of that lighter blue blended in there. Hello, Veronica from New York. How are you, Sharita? It's good to have you here. So the paints that I use uh, are Deco Art brand paints, which you can buy at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, uh, I think Michael still carries them. But um, I have a coupon code down in the description below on my YouTube that gives you 20% off of uh, your total order. It's only a one-time use uh, coupon, um, but you can grab that coupon down there and head over to Deco Art and grab some of these Traditions paints. Um, coupon code is LL23H1, 20% off. So this just happens to be my favorite paint. So it's great that they have a coupon for you. All right, I'm just gonna wipe that paint out of my brush because um, I don't wanna put all that moisture back in my brush. And I've got that darker blue in there. So I'm gonna wipe some of that out. I'm going to move all these papers here in a minute and get my easel out when we get ready to work a little bit more. So I'm just going to take that light blue mix again and start up here. I'm 
You can bring that light blue down as far as you want to. I didn't bring it down too incredibly far, but I do have it just a little bit lighter up here, so I'm going to get a little bit more white and blend that up there a little bit. spritz my palette because my brush is dragging a little bit so I want just a tiny bit of moisture in my brush and I'm going into just that lighter blue color that I picked now These are also great colors if you want to do a sky. A little bit of water. Just mix it up here in the background. If you want to add some lighter stuff right, right there, just do it. It's your background, man. I just want you to be happy with it. Alright, still got that lighter blue. I'm getting ready to add some darker blue in here. Maybe a little bit of this lighter over here. This is the lightest side of our canvas over here. Alright, I got both of those blues. I'm going to get a little bit more of that lighter blue. Maybe some white because that got a little dark. Bit of water and I'm going to take it up into that and blend it. I don't want any uh, hard lines stopping me anywhere. Okay. All right, that gives us a nice little, I think I might actually lighten this up just a touch right here. A little bit darker than what I want. Right on that line. Blend that out. I just don't want any hard hard lines on the background. Okay, that's a nice transition of color. I like that right there. So I'm going to get this dry. Now, it only took me an hour to come up with the idea. You know, I come up with the ideas as I'm painting. And it only took me about an hour to complete that 12 by 12. So hopefully it won't take too long to complete this one. want to make sure it's dry. Alright. Cool to the touch. Get me a new paper towel here. Alright, so I'm going to take a flat brush now. Um, any kind of flat brush will do because I'm just going to be adding uh, the darker color into the background now. We're going to put th this color in and then we're going to put our line drawing in and then we're going to work around our line drawing and do all the stuff that we want to do around it. But We want to get this darker blue throughout. I will try my best <laughs> to match my original one but this one might be a little bit harder to match up um, We'll see. We'll see if I can get that matched up or not. All right, damp brush. I'm gonna load that um, that dark blue that I've got there, and I'm just gonna kind of I don't know, like sawing motion. I guess it's just the tip of the brush is the only thing that is coming down on this canvas, and just create some. Fun little, this is shadowy areas in the water. I don't know. They're just here, there, everywhere. I don't know. Just 
whatever you feel. When I did my first one, it's just wherever I put the brush, I just let it kind of do its thing, you know? So that's what that's what makes this one a little bit more uh, relaxing because um, I didn't really think too much about you know what I was doing to the background I just started putting some paint on there and that that's that's what I want you to do I want you to get uh, to feel confident in your painting so that you can just put some color in wherever you want okay I'm gonna have my umbrella through here so some of this will probably get covered up but we'll put it in here anyway I'm really trying to kind of put it in the same places, but I'm sure I'm not getting it the same, <laughs> the same look. So, a bit more paint in this one. Might mix a tiny bit of water in there. Let that have a little bit more flow to it. Now, don't worry if you if you feel like you just get big chunks of really dark stuff in there because um, we can come back and break it all up so it's got a few steps to the background uh, anybody at all painting along with me today I know several of you got the line drawing for this one. I already know what we're doing next week and the week after. I do not have one of them made up yet. The other one I'm going to try and get up on my website today. I think this was one of the most relaxing paintings that I did because I really I really didn't think too much about what I was doing. I just I just did it. Okay, if you want to go back over any of them and make them a little darker, you can. Um, like I said, we'll be adding some lighter colors in here and I'm not sure I got the lower part down here same but it's going to be okay just some little shadowy stuff okay at this point I want to put my line drawing on before I start doing any more detail into my um, background so I'm going to grab my line drawing and like I said, this one is 85% uh, of my original for this 10 by 10. And let's see. Where do I think right about there ought to be okay. I'm trying to see how much space I have at the top on my bigger one. See if I want to make my space look the same. Oh, thank you, Veronica. Well, that part right there really was pretty easy. <laughs> it was. It was just kind of a sawing motion. Let me grab my stylus here, and we'll put all of our line work on here. thought this was just one of the, just a very appropriate spring painting. I know we're technically still in winter, but I am so ready for spring. Dark area. 
Okay, I'll, I'll still need this to put our shadow lines on, but we don't need our shadow lines on right now. Okay, so we've got that on there. So let's start doing some fun stuff to our background now. So I'm gonna stay with this brush here and take my white and that lighter blue and get a mix of that on my brush. And we're gonna start creating a few little highlights in here. I don't want them to become overly bright uh, to begin with. And you can cut through your blue areas and you know if they're too, too big and you wanna take them down a little bit, this is a good color to do that with. So this is, this is that light blue like we made up here. And we're just gonna start creating a few lighter areas in the water, some beginning of some reflections, I guess. And I did not make this a technical painting at all. I made this just a fun, I can't wait to sit down and paint it kind of painting. I like teaching you the technical stuff. Those are using my longer videos. But, um, you know, when we're just doing a quick live, I, I like for you to have fun with it. Although I do have a couple that will be coming up that will be a little bit more technical. So I'm just going to take this around my water. I'm almost dry brushing it at this point because there's not a lot of paint in my brush at all. really is more of a dry brush here. I start out when I load it uh, being up more on the chisel edge of the brush. I'm gonna add a little bit more white in here as I get up in this lighter area. Maybe just a touch more. Um, so I start out on the chisel edge and kind of scoot that around like I did the blue and then as I run out of paint on the chisel edge, then I start the dry brushing stuff. And over here, we definitely want to have some of this dry brushed. We'll add more in there, but we can get a start to it. Now, the background is that technique that I love, that bouquet um, background, that blurred out, all the reflections that are coming in off of the water. Alright, I'm going to put a little bit of this down here, maybe add a tiny bit more of that blue in there so it's not super bright down here. This will all change quite a bit down here when we get our shadow and stuff in. Okay, just dry brushy. Just that white and light blue. Any place you want like like line lines showing in there um, just a little bit more paint on your chisel brush and you can get a little bit more white I want to go up in here and add a little bit lighter stuff in here and this one is that light blue so my mix of my white and blue probably isn't going to show up too much up here dry brushing there and at the very end we'll come back and refine some of these highlights make sure we've got them where we want them to be now if we need to take anything else down all right I'm gonna rinse this brush and we're gonna start working on that bouquet effect in the background all of those sparkly lights that's all bouquet effect and we're gonna start out by just using a brush I'm gonna use an old 
filbert brush I think um, one that's kind of worn out I am going to dampen it but then remove the moisture out of the brush um, so that it's not full of water because I'm going to be doing this kind of a dry brush technique okay it's very easy to do um, we're just well here I'll just show you I'm gonna get some fresh white out though I think um, we're just making little dry brush blobs <laughs> nothing technical about this all right I'm gonna load my brush with my white paint I'm gonna get a dry paper towel and I'm gonna take off what's on the tip because I don't want to put down hard color to begin with and we're just gonna start um, adding some uh, little shapes in here. They don't have to be circles, all different sizes. Put them wherever you want them. I'm going to try and follow my other painting. I do not guarantee this one to <laughs> even remotely match. So We're just going to go around and start adding some little <sighs> the look of circles and as you run out of paint they'll be lighter and lighter. That is good. We want varying values here. We don't want it uh, all one note kind of thing. And I'm barely touching this brush to the surface. Just kind of scumbling a little circle type shape on there. It's not really a circle. It's just... Um, we're going to keep it mostly on this side, but we are going to come across the water and have lights sparkling on the water load my brush and then offload onto a dry paper towel very very softly lightly come in here and start adding these um, little lighter areas um, we can come back I say this every time we can come back and add more but uh, we can't take it away um, I am using a four filbert on this one on my other one I think I used an eight filbert so depending on the size of canvas that you're using, and, and this is just an old worn out one um, because I am scumbling, um, you know, it's going to be rough on the brush, especially since I'm on a canvas as well. Uh, if you're on a wood surface, it won't be as rough on your brush, but um, but use whatever size brush works for the um, size surface that you chose to paint on. Okay. Really, this part will take the longest <laughs> because we're, we're covering some big areas, but we're doing many layers. So, uh, you know, this is a good time if you've got questions to pop those questions up there. Tell me something about yourself. We've got cooler weather, like I said earlier cooler weather today. I'm not happy about it, but we shall see. We'll have our grandkids this weekend, so I'm looking forward to that, but it's supposed to be rainy. I think last time they stayed it was rainy as well, so I'd like to have some nice warm weather so we can go outside and kick the ball around. I like to play with them while they're still young enough that they want to get outside and play soon they'll be all grown up getting jobs having their own cars and hopefully Nana and Papa will not be forgotten all right you see I just moved up that side there I mean already that is looking so cool I tell you I love this this effect I, it's just it's one of my favorites <laughs> and I just you know I want to find as many ways to use it as possible <laughs> because it just it just creates such fun fun background effects and uh, since I do it quite frequently you know I tell you that you can look any commercial any movie <laughs> any ad whatever you're probably gonna see this effect because it is becoming really dominant in photography and videography and painting now and I love how it looks 
Okay, I'm working my way over to this side. I'm gonna add some over here. This is all just my first light layer. If you've got an old little scruffy brush that you want to use, you can do that. You can use that as well. Um, this brush was just worn out and it, it got me the look that I needed without um, that over. Make sure I keep you in camera shut. You know how I am. I load up and then wipe off. Let's see, I've got a few over here. Um, I'm gonna put some down through here, but then we're gonna put our shadow color underneath here, and then I'll come back and put some on top. Because I want some of these to appear like they have the reflection of the umbrella on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, some of these down here. Where our shadow will be. a little bit and then tap it off. Over here I just kind of did a little bit of tapping. I didn't really make the circle thing. I just kind of tapped it because you know this side over in here some of this will just kind of be like a light bouncing here and there but not becoming any kind of shape. want a few more of this layer down here. A little bit more paint here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of wipe my brush off and then I'm going to scumble some of this that's left in my brush and what's cool about doing it on canvas is it's going to grab the brush and leave some of this paint behind. But I want to do it mostly over here on this side. A little bit more. That's why I say I want you to use an old brush because I'm really just abusing this brush like crazy. Scumbling it in there. We're going to use this brush to apply another layer on here of those circly things. Make it a little bit brighter this time. Um, so I won't wipe out as much paint. But I am still going to use this brush. You can use a round brush, um, whatever brush you want to use. So I'm going to make them just a little bit brighter. Now your first layer, um, I think on my original one, my first layer, I did mix some blue with my white so it would fade in there a little bit. And then we're going to use our stencil to add our bright, bright ones on here. I want a few bright ones underneath the shadow part here, but um, not a lot. We'll come back and add them bright, bright on top when we get our shadow done here. All right, I'm going to move back up this side with these circles, or sort of circles, just little blobs. 
I'm going to let my brush run out of paint because I want to come in and dry brush behind these. I want it to be a little bit, a little bit more. light in the water behind these because they are hitting the water so the water's got to have a little bit of of lightness on it as well and just continue all the way around like we just did that first layer background is very repetitive but it's also very relaxing you can make some a little bit bigger in some of these areas where they have um, more light Kind of hitting it because the light is is more up here in this corner than it is anywhere else so you can have some bigger ones up in here i'm gonna almost fill that corner with light light stuff some bright stuff out there which I'm going to have to dry brush a little lighter color underneath okay. okay so I'm going to wipe the excess paint off and go in here and dry brush a little bit underneath those over here it's not covering up our stuff we're just like adding stuff behind where they are I mean that's looking pretty good already I love it okay I think I'm gonna take a break from that um, I may want to do one more layer with this brush, but it's okay to wash it out because we started with a damp brush. And see, I got paint way up in my ferrule here on this one. So I'll definitely have to make sure I clean that well after I'm done painting. Okay, so let's paint in our umbrella. Um, our umbrella is going to be um, our red color. So we'll go ahead and get a coat on that and get it drying any red doesn't matter now if you're using Americana paints um, the red will be a little bit more transparent this red is is kind of transparent but not overly I mean it's gonna cover up this dark blue okay I'm going to try and paint over my lines here, but if I don't, I will come back and erase them. Just take your time. You see, I put my paint out here in the middle so I didn't have a big old glob of paint on my brush. And I can get just a little bit on that tip and keep that nice chisel. see my line here Need a little bit of moisture and I'm using a 12 um, I'm using a, uh, a 
This is a flat, I believe. But the bristles almost look like a chisel blender brush, but I believe it's a flat. Just by the letter that's on it. But you use whatever brush that you like. Take your time on those points. Make sure that they are nice. Okay. Ooh, got a little bit too much moisture that time. A little more paint. I've said this before, but I absolutely love this paint, this Traditions paint. It is my absolute favorite. If I had started using this paint when I started painting, I probably wouldn't use any other paint. I just love it. It's creamy. It's pigmented. You don't have to shake it up. <laughs> so it's really nice paint. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my layer, my handles and everything done. Um, we're going to do that with a gray. So I'm going to grab a round brush. Not one that can, I can very easily make look like a flat brush. Uh, we need some black. And some more white because we're going to make a light gray. So there's my black, and I'll put some more white out right here. And we're just going to make a light gray. It's just white and black mixed together. Tiny little bit of black at a time. I'm not sure this brush is going to be big enough, but we'll give it a shot. So my handle is going to be this um, lighter gray color. Could be, could make it more towards a medium gray. My second layer, I might make it just a little bit darker. Turn it this way because I stuck my hand in, in my red paint. <laughs> Maybe I better clean that off or I transfer it somewhere else. Alright, I probably should get my easel out. That might make it a little bit easier for you guys. Gets it closer to the screen where you can see it. Also closer to my face where I can see it. <laughs> Hi Louise! Oh, good to have you here from Ontario. and keep it the same thickness. I'm also going to paint the little pointy thing at the bottom this color. Now we still got more work to do on the background. I'm just taking a little break from it. I'll get this base coated in and go back to our background. Okay, I want to make this part a darker gray, so I'm just going to add some more black into my mix here. A darker gray. Definitely need some water. This is a black color, so I can use my dirty water for it. I don't want this to look black. I just want it to be a dark gray.
Okay, that looks good. I have to let that dry. I'm going to have to put a second coat on my red. Just a wash of a coat, I think. Um, just for me, it's a little a little blotchy, so I don't I don't want it to be blotchy. Okay, I'm going to go back to my background. And I want to put one more layer with this filbert brush, and then we're going to work with the stencil on the background. So, one more layer with this one. If you're happy with your second layer and you don't want a third layer, then by all means. But I'll be doing less and less with each layer. And with this layer, I might just add, you know, like some, oh, I'll stuck my hand in the red paint again. Let me flip it up this way so I can stay out of my red paint. But I might just do some little dots, you know, like little sparkles out in the water, kind of like that. I'll turn it upright so you can see it. <laughs> Makes it look a little bit clearer for you to understand it, I guess. This is my, my lightest edge, so I want a little bit more sparkle over here. This layer should be a super quick one. And then you'll, you'll take what's on your brush when you're done and just scumble it here and there in your water. And, you know, if you want some more little sparkle things on the water, at the end we can do that with a, with a fine detail brush if you want but you can um, add some little, or a small round, add some little sparkle in the water. Okay, I'm going to wipe the excess out of my brush because I want to do that. Scumbling. With what's left there's not a whole lot left but we just want to spread it around and create some different values in our water we, want it, we don't want a one note water here okay uh, I'm gonna dry that real quick because I want to put my line drawing on here so that when I put my second layer on my red paint I can create a little wash and create my shadow, uh, reflecting, reflected shadow from the umbrella down here. I just want to make sure it's dry enough to lay my line drawing on. Okay, so when we're doing uh, a reflected shadow, this particular one you can um, make any way that you want. Um, I kind of just sort of lined that thing up to where the one underneath it is, but not 100% because I want it to come kind of past it. So like that is up on the umbrella, okay? And then I just pressed it down there. And then I just put my lines on. I'm gonna try and do them lightly. If they don't come on lightly, then I will erase them back. So that's not a problem right there. Let's see where I'm starting at. I'm starting right about here, and just on the other side of that. So right about there, and bring it up and curve it down. I got a little bit more on my other one. We don't need any other lines than that. Um, on this one, I'll bring it into camera shot. Because it's a bigger canvas, I got two of the the curved areas of the umbrella on it but since I'm painting a smaller one today I only got one okay that is a little bit dark so I will erase that back just to where I can see it so now that you see how it's on there I just want to remove some of that because if I get paint on it then it's set in there and I don't really want any hard lines in my water like this I just want a guide. So erase it back to where you can barely see it. And if that is hard for you to see when you're painting, then 
just paint up to those lines. Don't go over them because then you can come back and erase them. Like I can come back and erase some of these because I didn't get paint over them. All right, let's put a second coat on our umbrella here. And we, we just need a thin layer of paint here. We don't need anything uh, heavy. So I'm just going to thin some down with some water and get a nice coat here and just fill this in. And don't do what I just did and get out of line. Red is one of the hardest colors to clean up if you get it in your background where you don't want it. So let's try to keep it in the area that we want it to be in. I very rarely use straight out of the bottle paint when I'm painting on my second layers. Um, and I always uh, add water to my first layers. I don't like my paint to be heavy, thick paint. I'd rather do more layers and have a nice, smooth painting than do a quick, thick layer and not have it look good. I mean, the, the base coats are the foundation for your painting. So if you don't do them well, then your painting will not turn out well. All right, so I've got this damp brush. I'm gonna get more water. I don't want very much color in my brush, so I'm going to work some water into that and really dilute the um, paint and tap my paper towel and I'm just going to come in here and paint my color. Now I can see I need a little bit more color. I'm not sure how well you're seeing it, so I'm going to go back here and pull some of that color into that water and get a little bit more color. I'm going to stay off of my pointy thing there, but I am going to go around it. I probably will make that a little bit darker. I'm going to add a little bit more red into it because on my original one it's a little bit darker in the water. You can probably see it a little bit better now. Going right over all these areas. Okay, that's a lot of water. That is a ton, ton of water. I got bubbling and everything. Don't want bubbling. That means I've got way too much water in my brush. Okay, so there we've got a nice little shadow. I'm going to dry that so that I don't stick my hand in it. So it's got that little bit of red tint to it. Uh, you want more red tint? You can do it again. Uh, I didn't want that huge of a red tint to it. Um, so, you know, that option, totally up to you. Your painting, you get to be the creator and say, hey, I want more. Still not quite dry. <laughs> I had a lot of water. Lots of water. All right. That's probably dry enough for me to move on. I'm going to get a quick second layer on my handle. I need a lot more white. that all the way down to that point there on the umbrella. That point right there. There should be no gap. No gap. Alright, a little bit more black in the mix. Make that darker gray. And we'll give a quick second coat up here. 
think I need to shift that there. It looks a little weird shaped right there. This is looking so good. All right, I'm going to start putting a little bit of shadow on my umbrella. Now, you can use um, an angle brush if you want to. I, I didn't use an angle brush on any of this project. I'm going to take my red. Actually, I'm going to fully load my brush with red. And then corner into some black and blend that into my red. On that corner of my brush right there. And we're going to put some shadowy stuff on here. I need some moisture. This canvas really wants to pull at my brush. So we'll get some moisture. Try to remember which side has the black on it. So when you blend more in, you're just blending it into that, that edge. That's pretty dark. A little bit more red. So this is just um, an easy blend of that black in there. Uh, if you get too much, then just come back with some more red in there. We're going to go down along this edge. We're going to bring it up this side just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. But we do want to bring that out into the umbrella a little bit. And I did not get a mop brush, but I will grab one. Because that's a little choppy and I want to smooth it out. Alright, I'm going to take this brush with this mix in it. And I'm going to come down from my points and create my, um, my things here. Now, you can draw them in if you want. I did not. I just came off of the point a little bit and down and left a little gap down here at the bottom. Okay, so the black edge. A little moisture. Okay, that's pretty good right there. I'm going to take a little bit of this, this dark color that's in here and just very loosely put some next to these two. And just a tiny bit down here. It's just kind of dry brushing this in there, that, that little bit of darker color. Okay, you get too much, come back with your, your red and kind of settle that in there. Okay, if you want that to be darker on the shading, you can do that as well. Okay, we're going to work on the handle. So I need a smaller brush. I think I will get a little angle brush here. Let's see if that will work for me. I don't know. Um, I want to shade on the handle with some black. So right here, need moisture. When your paint does not want to come off your brush, and you know you got paint on it, a little bit of moisture. Go here. You can just use a small flat for this as well. I generally use that little chisel blender for doing stuff like this. We're going to go up this edge. So we're going to have that side more highlight on it. And we'll do the same down here. Touch that with my finger so it won't be quite so dark. And I'm going to put a little bit of shading on my handle part.
the sides more in the shadow, so we'll put a little bit more on that edge. Okay, it's coming together. Okay, you can repeat that if you need to. Um, actually, down here, I think I might repeat it. And my little pointy thing got a little bit bigger than what I wanted, but it's not that big on my original one. Since so try and keep yours a little bit smaller, not quite so so fat. Not sure what I was thinking when I painted that in. I wasn't thinking. Okay, I'm gonna take my round brush and some white. And I'm gonna have to get some white out. <laughs> I've used it for everything. Just gonna dry brush on here. Just a little dry brush. Maybe a kiss of some there. Down here. it and get it a little bit brighter that's pretty bright okay we're going to do the uh, umbrella now and I'm going to use two different brushes for this one I'm going to use my small flat brush make sure there's no color in that brush my brushes are damp, and I'm going to use this round brush that I was using up on the handle. So I'll just load a little paint on both of them. And with this one, I just kind of dry brushed along the edge here. Maybe in this one, I'll just do the middle. This one, I'll break it up a little bit. And this one just gets a little little on that edge it's not in the light as much I'm gonna come down my uh, section lines here and just dry brush a little bit on there okay and then I'm going to take this um, flat brush and I'm gonna come down this edge and a little bit here I'm trying to make it look like <laughs> like my original so I know I did it like this just dry brushing it on there I'm not um, I don't I don't have a lot of paint on my brush because you can come back and repeat this if you want it to be darker And over here, I just did a little bit here. Um, I think I'm going to repeat that because I feel like it really faded in there. Get it a little bit brighter. Still want it to be dry brushy. Just another little dry brush layer is all I'm doing. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have to finish up in our water. We've got white on this brush right here, this round one, so I'm just going to take it and I just want to put a few little sparkly sparkles out here in the water in a few places and then we're going to do our stencil and finish up the background. And we'll double check after we um, do our stencil to make sure that we don't need to come back and add any more lightness into our dark areas or any streaking throughout the background in the water like, you know, streaking like that. This is just a little, few little, little dots, it's kind of going to draw your eye. These are just little sparkle dots. They're brighter than what we've got in here already. Just a few, just 
don't go crazy. I really think it makes the water shine. And then when we add our brightest little bouquet effect on top, Now, if you want to go in here and shadow more underneath your uh, umbrella, I think I will do that just a tiny little bit of that blue, that dark blue. I might add a scooch of some black in there. So like that, that blue area right there could have been a little bit more pulled out to create a little bit more of a shadow here. So I'm just gonna create a little bit of a shadow and maybe right underneath my umbrella, right there where it's kind of touching the water. You can have it a little bit darker right there where it's setting on the water. All right, let's do our bouquet effect. I'm gonna wide angle just a little bit. I want you to see the whole canvas. Okay, I'm gonna use this size of stencil and I'm just gonna use an old scruffy brush. Again, my dry paper towel and white. I want some fresh white here. And I'm going to try and put it on the spot on my palette where it won't be contaminated with any other color. So I'll remove that off of there. sure it doesn't have any color in it and then put my white there all right I'm just using a, an old I don't know what kind of brush it is it says it's a stippler brush just in my old brush pile so I'm gonna load some paint on here tap 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 onto my paper towel tap 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 and then just start making your circles these will be bright they're going to be on top. Just move your stencil around. And wherever you want them to be. I'm adding some back down here into our uh, red reflection here because I want to make sure that It shows that these are on top. I can come back with my little um, little uh, round brush like I was putting everything else in and add some around those two that aren't quite so pink. I think I did that on my original one. Now these aren't super these aren't super bright here these that I'm adding down here. Um, I've worked a lot of the paint out of my brush, so they're not um, super, super bright. Because this is more of the shadowy side, but we still want some stuff going on here. So I will have to come back and scumble with my white underneath that to make it look connected to the water a little bit more. I'm running out of paint in my brush, so I'm gonna do some of these over here that are going to be much lighter uh, and kind of fade off into the water. Right, I'm gonna start doing some really bright ones now. Where, just wherever. And I did on my original one, I added a couple, I think about four or five maybe, of some bigger circles, some maybe a bigger little sparkle coming in there. I might do that to this one since it's not that much smaller than my original one. I don't know. I don't know.
And I might try something on a couple of these that I did not do on my original one. We'll see at the end. I think I want to add something on a couple of these. Make some overlap. Don't put them all out by themselves. Gotta have some overlapping. thing about this stencil if you're putting circles in many places <laughs> more than likely going to be able to do several several circles at one time depending on how you lay it on here and over here we need more because this is a very bright area sure I'm going all the way to the edge there. I think I will come in and add a couple of big ones in here. And let me see if I can turn my light down a little bit, see if you can see that corner. better without so much glare on it. Oop, made a little bit of a line there, so I want to make sure I break that up. Like I said, up here in the corner, it's the brightest. So um, it's going to have a lot more sparkle stuff going on. And you can make your first layer of circles with a little bit of blue mix. And that way, when you come back and add more, um, they'll definitely stand on top. Across here. Work your brush till there's nothing left in it. That's going to be very helpful. A little bit more paint. any of these circles that I'm putting on if they appear to be floating in air we will um, dry brush a little bit of white underneath them so that they look like they are actually reflecting off of some of the lighter parts of the water Okay, 
So I'm going to take this brush that's still got paint in it and scumble a little bit around some of these. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to have to put some of this down here. I'll probably come back with my little brush and put some more down there. A few little highlights in the, in the water, too, with a liner brush or a detail brush or a round brush, some kind of brush. grab my bigger circle and put just a couple in here. Now what are you guys thinking? I think first I'll grab my little filbert brush that I used and make a few Start bringing it all together here. Okay. Let's add a couple of bigger circles and then we'll finish out with some little highlight streaks in the water. So, which size did I use? I'm not sure which size I used here. Half inch. Half inch. Half inch size. Hold my brush up. Tap that one in. If it's too bright, just touch it with your finger. I'll kind of push it down in there a little bit. I like to add in just a few, few bigger ones in here. I thought it really helped create that illusion of a lot of reflected light. Okay, I think that's, that's about all I did on my original one. All right, continue to look and see if you need anything brighter, anything a little highlight underneath. And I'm gonna come back to probably my round brush. And then, actually I think I'll use my flat brush so I can get that chisel edge. Just a little bit going through the water. Definitely want to kind of break it up where the reflection is so that we know that's, you know, reflecting down in the water. Okay? And just come through here and any place that you want to add a little bit of some stuff in here. Just go for it. If you need to break up any of your dark blue a little bit more. You can certainly do that. Maybe keep it a little bit more on this side because this is the, the highlight side. And now one thing I did not do to my other one I thought could be interesting on this one. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. You may not like it. Um, I may not like it. I may wipe it right off as soon as I'm done to create a little bit. I think I may have to use my detail liner here. I'm going to grab that. Then some paint down. Then some white down. That water off my ferrule. I don't want that. And maybe create a little bit of sparkle. I don't know. I don't even know if that's going to show up. 
That doesn't look like it's showing up right there, I'm telling you. Let me try that again. I don't know. It could work. Could not. I can't get my paint thin enough here. I don't know if that's a look I like or not. I think I prefer just the little the little dabbies on the water. That look like sparkle. So I don't think I'll leave those on there. Okay. All right. All right. I haven't cleaned my scruffy brush yet. I'm making sure I don't need a little bit more scrubbing of some color anywhere. Ooh, okay. That was a lot of that was a lot of scrubbing of some color right there. My baby wipe. Take that off. Good thing about baby wipes. Woo, just take it right off. I think I do want a little bit more up here, a little bit more scumbling. Just to make it a little bit brighter. And along this edge a little bit. I really like that scumbling underneath those circles because it really gives it that effect that it's light bouncing off of the water, not just circles floating in the air. Okay. I think I might be done with that one. Let's Let's give a comparison, and then I'll show you what we're going to do next week. Move some of this stuff out of the way. These are my scrap papers I've been painting on. So let me get this stuff out of the way. And I'll turn off my palette camera. Palette. So you can see. We'll see. See, see if I got it even, even close. Even close. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Looks pretty good. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Turned out really cute. I think I like the lighter blue in this one. This one's a little bit darker up in here. I did come in with a little bit of a darker blue value, it looks like up in here, and add, added some of that color around my dark blue areas up in here, which kind of created a little bit more of a shadowy area, like that. That's super cute, really, really cute. Okay, this one was a lot of fun. Super, it, it's, you know, it was a super easy one because we mostly worked on the background. The umbrella was easy. It, didn't require a lot of technical stuff, but it still looks super cute and dimensional, and I like that. So, let's take a look at what we're doing next week. Um, we're going to be doing these cookies here. These little cookies. But I'm not going to do all of them. The pattern will have all of them, but on my live, I'm only going to do three, okay? So I just wanted to tell you, if you're going to do this, there's a couple ways you can prepare your surface. One is you can paint it all black like this. Put your line drawing on and then paint your cookies white, which is how I did this one. And then on this one, I painted the surface white because I'm on a wood surface here. If you're on a canvas, you can just draw your line drawing on and paint around it with black. So on this one, I painted around it with black. And on this one, I uh, painted the whole thing black 
and then put my cookies on like this and painted them white. But it will take you several coats of white to do that. But even the surface took several coats of white. So you're doing several coats of white whichever way you go. Um, so, but that's what we're going to do next week. I've already got planned what I'm doing the week after. I just haven't got it painted yet. And the week after that, which will be pretty close to St. Patrick's Day. So I've got a St. Patty's Day when hopefully, fingers crossed, that will turn out that um, we'll be doing that week. So let me get me big on the screen. Make sure there's not any questions. Oh, thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Rosanna. Thank you guys so much for being here, for hanging out with me. Um, I did forget to announce this one, so let me move my website address because it's right in my face. Um, so that's on me. <laughs> so probably a lot of people had forgotten. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it was a fun class today. Very, very relaxing for me. I, I really enjoyed painting that. It was just, even when I created the, the original one, it was totally relaxing the whole way through. So those are the kind of paintings I like to bring to you. Some that you can um, learn some new technique on. Um, you know, especially if you're a beginner and you're wanting to try some different things, that's a good beginner one. Um, so it's it's a lot of fun. You see, I see my dogs back here. My video I have on my channel of that. Um, that's impressionistic. And then the cat back there. That's our grand cat. <laughs> So I'm going to give that to my son and daughter-in-law this weekend. Um, those were both impressionistic, uh, impressionism style paintings. So they were a lot of fun to paint easy because I do not do animals. Uh, but if I can have a shape and sort of make it look like what it's supposed to look like, works for me. So uh, those turned out really good. Oh, thank you, Sharita. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. All right, you guys, is there any questions before I sign off here? This was a lot of fun. I'm glad that you guys came and stayed with me, and I figured right at an hour and a half, and look at that. I did well. <laughs> I did well. <laughs> so, all right, I don't see any questions or anything, so I am going to say thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe. If you have not subscribed, please give me a thumbs up. Please comment and please share onto your social media uh, so people can see all of my painting videos. I appreciate you all so very much. I will see you on the next one and I will get it up on my website and here on YouTube I'll have it upcoming uh, so you'll know what's coming up. So thank you very much everybody. Uh, have a wonderful and blessed remainder of your day and a wonderful and blessed remainder of your week and your weekend wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Bye-bye.